It's Arsenal versus Southampton, basically top versus bottom. Uh, Arsenal minus 550, Southampton plus 1400. Arsenal have got to win by a minimum of two goals for you to get paid because it's minus 115. Arsenal minus two, the draw is at plus 650. Uh, Arsenal to score three, minus 125. I don't like anything on the Southampton side. Maybe the plus two is a push at minus 105, Marco here. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're big handicap starts, they're big team totals to try and overcome. And, you know, when you're getting minus money on those kind of numbers, it's, it doesn't really appeal to me from an Arsenal perspective. Um, I think worryingly, they've started really strongly in the last two weeks, but second half against West Ham, they did look a little bit short of ideas in the second half when they were put under pressure and <clears throat> West Ham played on the counter-attack and really sort of, um, we saw the, the impact of no Saliba, as, as Stinch was saying too. So. Uh, intrigued to see uh, what the, the psychological impact of the, of the last fortnight is on Arsenal. Still expect them to, to get a good result in this match because, as we know, as we talk about all the time, really, in this kind of sample, is when Arsenal are at home to a bottom half team or when Arsenal are minus money home favourites, they tend to get the job done and done quite emphatically too. So they've got an 80% win rate <clears throat> in this kind of environment um, over the last five seasons, which is, you know, if you go back to the previous four campaigns, they were nowhere nowhere near as consistent as they have been this time around. So this tends to be Arsenal's spot. Um, I thought Southampton competed reasonably well against Palace last week. The final score was a touch harsh, but it's now four defeats and six winless games, no clean sheets in five, conceding 12 goals. Uh, I think Ruben Sellers steadied, steadied the ship pretty well after the Nathan Jones debacle, but um, I just think Southampton are paying the price for, for making too many managerial changes and, and removing Haas and Huttle without having a sort of clear plan in place or direction to go. So it's hard to see them escaping trouble now um, and it's hard to see them getting a result at the Emirates. Uh, Arsenal have won each of the last four there since losing to City and they scored three or more goals in all four of those wins. So I can understand why they're minus money to overcome those handicaps and team totals. But um, the, the price was stood out to me was Arsenal to collect under 1.5 cards. Uh, yeah, so Arsenal fair. to collect zero or one card here, which is plus 150. Uh, I don't normally like opposing card counts because it's not the most enjoyable watch. But uh, this wager has actually won in nine of Arsenal's last 11 home games in the Premier League. Uh, and since August, the only games it hasn't won at uh, when Arsenal have played at the Emirates were against Man City, Newcastle and Spurs, all three of which are considered very big games from an Arsenal perspective, you've got the Derby, you've got your biggest title rivals and a Newcastle team who were flying at the time. Uh, over the course of the whole season, Arsenal are averaging just one card per game at the Emirates and nine of their 11, nine of their last 11 league games here have produced a maximum of just three cards. Uh, Simon Hooper is in charge. He's averaging 3.18 cards, well below league standards for the Premier League. He's officiated Arsenal twice and given them just one card in total. He's done two Southampton games and given their opposition a total of just one card as well. He's also taken charge of seven Premier League games where there's been a very strong home favourite at minus 200 or shorter. And on five occasions, he's given that home side zero or one card. On four occasions, he's given them no cards whatsoever. So normally in big blowouts, as the market suggests this one could be, the card count decreases quite significantly. So I think plus 150 on Arsenal under one and a half cards is, is a really good price. Yes, yeah, a massive price. Uh, you look at Southampton, they lack creativity and also they're quite passive and they will be passive because they'll be trying to get men behind the ball stinch. I like the fact that Southampton don't really put their foot in because they can't afford to uh, make this a really dirty game. They've got to have a clean football match because they just got to have numbers behind the ball. Does Southampton score though? Because if Southampton score, you're getting plus 100 and they're always dangerous from set pieces. I know that's a bit of a cliche and a bit of a cop out because it's just a blind man can see or say that. But Southampton to score at plus 100, that might be the only value on this board. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad you mentioned that because that was what I was going to touch on. Arsenal have looked a bit susceptible defensively, as I mentioned, with, with that Saliba absentee. Um, you know, Zinchenko is not a natural left back either, and I think maybe not necessarily his fault. But obviously, against Liverpool, he, he allowed uh, Alexander Arnold to, to to get past him to set up the uh, equaliser. Arsenal have only kept three clean sheets in the last 16 games across all competitions, so it definitely piqued my interest thinking about Southampton to score, given the line is just half a goal. But I think I'd want a bit bigger than, than plus 100. I think we have to remember this. This is top versus bottom. Arsenal are top, um, deservedly so. Southampton are fighting relegation, deservedly so. So despite the fact that it is a, lo it is a low number to overcome and uh, you know, you're getting plus money, I think I'd want a, a bigger price there. Because as you say, a lot of goals Southampton have scored this season have come from set pieces. 
and that's not really a sustainable route to, to long-term goal scoring success. Yeah, I think it's one of those where you have to be a little bit careful with Arsenal because for Arsenal, it's all about winning and not conceding. Um, that's where Mitch has gone. Mitch has gone Arsenal win to nil. Jonathan Nelson's gone Arsenal team total. Over two and a half. Um, Chelsea fans are now cheering on the Saints because Harry Dockett is saying, come on the Saints. Um, I think you need to save your energy and breath for your own team, to be honest. Let's have a little look at the official picks. Keep them coming, though. Barcelona says Saka, anytime scorer, plus 220. I like Saka to maybe bounce back. And also Jesus with shots on target. But we've got Arsenal under one and a half cards in the game at plus 150. Remember, they average one card. So you're getting plus money for them to basically stay with their average.